Hi and welcome back to Shouting Electronics. In this episode we've got six patients on the workbench. These are industrial vibrator controllers. Apparently they're all not working so we're going to take a look and see if we can salvage any of them and get them operational. Maybe use one or two as a donors for parts for the other ones. The reason you have such large controllers is for this type of electromagnetic vibrator. This goes underneath a metal hopper in the factory and as it vibrates the goods fall from the hopper into wherever they're going onto the conveyor or whatever. If they're going too fast you actually want to slow down the vibrator speed so it doesn't dump so much product. If it's too slow you want to speed it up so you get a consistent amount of products going onto the conveyor at one time. That's where these controllers come in handy. They basically control the vibrator motor's vibration frequency. So I think let's take Let's open them all up first and just get a rough idea of what they look like inside and see which looks like it's going to be the easiest fix. And for those of you that watch BigClive.com's channel, please tell him I've got a bigger vibrator than he does. Okay, one of these smells disgusting in it. Doesn't smell too good. Which one is that? One of them smells very bad. And it smells like this bug guy over here. Okay, so let's take a look and see if we can get at least one of these guys working. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start with the most disgusting smelling one. And we can just take a look over here. Okay, so in the lid here, you've got the potentiometer that controls the speed. You've got a double pole illuminated rocker switch that's seen better days. Inside, you've got the control circuit with the triac compensation module thing that can't get almost anywhere. Fuses and odds and ends. Okay, so let's see what things are going to look like underneath because it smells nice and toasty. Okay, we have a burn mark, some tracking over there. And if we look at the circuit board, I think you can see what I see. We have got some burning over here at the... One capacitor has actually desoldered itself there. And what are those terminals? Those are the vibrator output terminals that go to the vibrator motor. So maybe if we can just clean this up and sort it out. It actually looks like there was no solder on there at all, but I'm sure it just blew out the way. And it's charged right into the board. Then we should track this. So I think we're going to dig this out. How deep has it gone? Has it gone through the board? Okay, well this is just a single layer board, so that shouldn't be a hassle. Let's get the good clean up here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it. I'm going to put a actually put a jumper from here to here to just secure that piece over there, and probably do the same for these four points over here because those are the high current points. And I didn't pull carefully, and I've got off all over my workbench. Just in 95 percent isopropyl, 99 percent, 99.6 percent alcohol. Good scrub. That oh, that's the leg of the terminal block.
like I say, I'm not going to rely on the tracks themselves. I'm also going to go through. I'm not going to rely on the tracks themselves anymore because those aren't securing too well. So I'm going to use some thick legs from power resistors. It added stability. Okay, so here's my power resistor. 5 watts, 4.7k ohms. It's gonna make a nice little loopsy there. Give it some solder. I think this connection just got loose. Oh, my pliers are a bit bent. Man, shame. This connection got loose for the terminal block and it just vibrated itself to smithereens. And caused so much localized heat that it melted the solder for the capacitor and that there. So we'll just secure that there. So now that's tied on. Takes a lot of heat. I think this thing's un this vibrator motor is un coil is only vibrated at 0.25 amps. I think I'm going to take another one. 0.25 amps, 230 volts. But it can handle the controller can handle up to a 6 amp vibrator. 0.25 amps. I'm also going to put one in from here. And then and just now we can test this and see if it controls that vibrator motor. short one in from across those two points there. Oh sorry, hope I didn't have that shot too long. Uh, 6 months 2019. Just making a note in here. In case it comes back for the same thing. So 10th month 2018. I refer the coil and turn off the overcurrent protection, which was tripping too often on this unit. And then. Yeah, now I've done that, and we need to switch as well. Okay, so let's take out the switch. We'll just borrow a switch from one of the other units. But there's a chance one of these other units aren't going to work. So don't need it. Okay, so now we've got a nice sealed switch. Put the wires back on the switch. 
then first test is I'm going to put power. Onto this unit. Yes, the power is off on the sleeve, doesn't plug in it in. Okay, before I even try to connect the controller, I just see if this is about. It's always safer to put it back in the box because I don't feel like if there is a fault, I don't want to blow a hole in my workbench. Switch is illuminating. Rest of the control board is dead. Okay, that overcurrent that arcing might have caused uh, plasma arc and overcurrent. So let's pull the fuses and see if we haven't blown a fuse in the suit. That fuse is open circuit. Let's try the other fuse. Okay, so we have got two blown fuses. Okay, now I did have it, my camera, thanks a lot camera, drop out when it was recording, so I don't know if you caught any of that, but I've replaced the blown fuses now with fuses from another unit, and I'm going to hook the vibrator motor up and see if that works. Okay, so I've got my mains coming straight into the power switch. And on this side, power switch goes into the vibrator controller. The vibrator controller goes out to this heavy vibrator motor. It's a matter of it. Okay, so I've got the controller hooked up to the vibrator motor. Let's see what happens now. Switch is off. See the workbench buzzing. Let me hold the screwdriver on the vibrator motor. You can see it jumping around there. It doesn't seem to be operating very linearly. There, it's fast. Turn it, but it slows down. There goes fast, and there goes very fast. Okay, well, let's just take a look at the potentiometer. See if the potentiometer looks nice and smooth. Okay, so there's 10k, and I'm turning it up. 17k, 18k, and I'm turning it down. Okay, so that's zero. For all the jumps there, see there? 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 17, 15. Yeah, this pot is definitely, definitely not smooth. I saw one of these controllers, they did take off the pot. So I'm going to, oh, well, they disconnected the pot. I'm going to take the pot of this one and put it onto. That one. Zero up to ten. Yeah, that's right. Let's try this again. Let's see if we get it running a bit smooth this time. And run speed. Smoother. Okay, that's smoother across the whole range. Hold it, it's just gonna buzz in my hands. Okay, so this one looks like it is fixed. Problem, what I see is 
connection was loose or they did something when they were connecting this terminal it went and vibrated loose and started arcing which caused drew too much current and blew the fuses so how did we fix it well we fixed the track as you saw we went and replaced the fuses and we changed the potentiometer that's a bit suspect and we changed the switch so we've done a lot of work on this so I think this one should be good to go I'm just going to put some coating over here to stop it from arcing again in case and then we are going to zip it up and this one is good to go so that's number one Okay, next one, i will save you the hassle of waiting for me to take it out. This one I did replace the coil before. Uh, the choke and the switch. Okay, now if we look over here. And this one had blown fuses just now that we were trying to extract. So let's clean up here first. Let's brush its teeth. Okay, you can also see that I did reflow the the triac there. The thyristor for AC to triac. So the blown fuse here. <sighs> Yummy. Burn is right through the board and the fuse hold open. That's the fuse hold open on there. You can see there's actually melted plastic in the fuse holder. I don't know if you can see that there. So I think I need to pull out that fuse holder. And throw my screwdriver on the floor. That's always important to do. Throw your screwdrivers on the floor. Oh no, we don't need no screwdrivers. Yep, fuse holder is toasted. I wonder if that could have just been a poor contact with part of the fuse. Just checking on the top here. Do the one-handed solder job. Okay, so there I've got the one leg of the fuse holder in place over here somewhere. Yeah. This is the jumper to the resistor that I'm pushing in down over there. And a bit more alcohol there just to try to clean the things a bit. Okay, fuse holder pin onto my bridge wire and coil pin onto my bridge wire. I hope I'm not getting that too much in the shot there. My little bridge wire is touching both of them, and this holder is just doing the final little job it can do. Reflow that to the resistor, make sure that's nice and nice and flowed. See, the motor. Here is our toasted fuse holder. And if I can pop it in the bin from here, yes, and it's a perfect shot. Okay, speed on minimum. I've got a hum. Let's 
put the screwdriver in there so you can see it. Hope you like that sound. Oh. So that looks like number two is done. Once I put the nuts in, and close it up. Okay, patient number three. Actually looks in very good condition. I've checked the board and all that. I've actually switched it on and it works. So the only thing I've really done to it so far is change the knob on the potentiometer because this is what it looked like and this is a replacement one that I have. So. I've run it for a bit, changed to different speeds, started at a different part in the cycle. It's all fine, all connections are fine. So this one is working. Strange. <laughs> Let's try another one. Okay, number four. What do you think is wrong with this picture? Besides all the dirt in the box. Something's missing. Working or look at another one. Look right there. The coil. It's supposed to be there next to the fuses. It's missing. And you can see it actually looks like it's burnt and vibrated itself out or whatever, so let's pull this board. Okay, that one was very dusty and filthy inside. Let's take a look where the coil goes. Coil goes here. One, two, three, four. You can see it's um, basically a bad solder joint where it's actually Pulled its way out on those three points. That one arced a bit, but this one. One, two, three, four. No, that one's still got a wire in, even though there's no coil there. So let's suck that out quickly. No, I don't even need to suck. That sucks. Carbonizing is okay over there because there's no no traces or other components near that side, so I'm fine with that. Which way do these chokes sit? That right here. If I put it the other way, I'm shorting out. And shorting out's not good. Okay, now the three fingered salute again. <laughs> Solder that leg in place. Leg's fine. This leg over here. This is the one I said I'm going to do some of my guide work on here. Yeah, who am I to judge? I'm just working here. And I said also I'm going to do this control. I could use a smaller wire for it. Oops, because it's a low current source, but I'll just use the same, it's easier. Oh, great. I've got four minutes of memory left on this memory card. That is strange. Guess I have to delete something from the camera now in that case. Uh, four minutes is enough for us to see if this one works. Okay. Four minutes, number four. It's 
fate. Okay. So let me pop this together quickly. I'll be back in a second. Not so soon. I switched it on and I saw some sparks. Where did I see the sparks? From the top of this. One microfarad capacitor and as you can see the lead is nicely nice and clean off it there so take one from the donor board. Okay new capacitors are in as you can see from the donor board one microfarad 250 volt caps let's see what happens now We have got a green LED. Okay, and here we go. Speed at minimum, switch on. It's a very ugly sound. Let me just adjust my minimum and maximums. No, okay, so this one looks like it's more of an in-depth fault. So we'll sideline this and we'll try to get another one working. Okay, patient number five. Johnny five. Okay, let's switch on power. Switch on the power. No green light on the board. Our own meter. Okay, we'll put it to continuity. Now I'm going to zoom you in on the board so you can see. You don't need to see the actual thing, you'll just hear a beep. The tester, okay. Like that, okay. So here is our live and neutral. They come in on those sets of pads there. Anyway, around. Test today, that's good. So on that to there. That's good. Now let's test continuity across the fuses. Okay, there. sorry, that fuse goes to there. This fuse goes to. Yeah, as you can hear. Okay, let's go all the way across the coil now. Common mode choke goes from there all the way through the fuses through the common mode choke. This one th through the fuse through the common mode choke. Let's check from the common mode choke out. Okay. To say about here somewhere. That's good. Other out of the common mode choke to here. Okay, that's fine. Let's try from the common mode choke this thin trace now. Okay, that's no continuity. Let's take you in close. I don't know how close I can get with this test with this camera. I don't know if you can see, but this is the trace we were testing and it actually looks like it's been burnt off there. Maybe it's not making proper contact with this pad for the common wire choke. Because so I was testing from there to there and I'm getting no continuity. So I'm going to put a jumper lead from here to there and then see if that restores our power. Let's go. So some things you can't get schematics for. It's closed or proprietary, whatever, in which case just try, anyway, maybe we'll get it, maybe it's something easy like a broken trace, or something you can see like a burn mark where part went missing and all that, don't like the way that one's bubbling up, so I'm going to put another link down to the side anyway, just as an added precaution. Yeah, so like I was saying, you can actually just look for burnt parts, or you can smell and you can smell, oh, that smells like a capacitor that's burnt out, and then you know, run about where to look. Because there was no smell, it was just, just a way of testing and knowing based, uh, sort of how the circuit runs. Okay, so now jump it across there, jump it across there, keep that, uh, that gap. And go and grunge the whole board across. See there? So that's one, two, three traces I have to patch up. North Peter, thank you very much. Okay, 
one and two. And three. Okay, I patched up my mistake. Sorry about that. Just just try to stop it from arcing and corroding. Especially down here on the coast. Everything corrodes. Switch off, turn the wick down. Okay, let's see. I've got a nice sounding buzz. That one looks good. Okay, so we're getting there. Five of six is done. Let me button him up. Let me try number six or six. Board number six. Capacitor. Flapping in the breeze. And I think this one had blown fuses as well. South Africa fall. They look terrible. You get poor paws in other countries. Since it's just a control circuit. Just control circuit, I'm just going to bridge it across to the pad. But I mean, if this one works, then 5 out of 6 ain't bad. Why are you having such a hard time solving? fuses in that are pulled from the other board from that one that's not controlling properly I'm gonna steal a switch module from one of these guys okay I've got a switch with a broken uh, in glass or perspex or whatever that red thing is no, that's okay it's just for testing Makes sense right way. I feel like I'm hooking this one upside down, which means the light will stay on the whole time. Let's take a look. Okay, switch off. Okay, we'll switch upside down. No, oh, that's right. Okay, so switch is on. And I've got a green light. Give me the green light. Switch is off. Okay, so we got the so we got the vibrator connected to the controller with a temporary switch that comes from another one. Turn the speed right down, and let's see. Yo, straight away that's full blast. See, somebody's been playing with the minimum and maximum settings, yeah. And let's try that again. Okay, minimum. So I'm going to turn the minimum up slowly to a decent vibration. Okay, that sounds like a decent hum. And then maximum. Now 
that sounds good. Minimum up to maximum. Cool bananas. So that one is working. Okay, so I think that's good to go. We managed to repair five out of the six vibrator controllers. So that's something. The other one might, if it's too much to fix, it'll just become a donor control board for parts for future vibrator controllers that fail. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe and click that little bell icon if you want to be notified about when we put up new videos. Hope you enjoyed it.